you know, Git isn't hard to learn. All you need is an installation of Git, a little bit of time, maybe a good instructor, and patience to just kind of wrap your head around some of the esoteric things that you got to work with in order to really master Git. And one of those unusual things that throws people off right at the beginning is the Git index, the Git staging index. You see, when you work with Git, you, Git allows you to create a repository where you can store your source code and maintain a history of all of your changes. That history of changes is called a commit. But Git is not like autosave in Microsoft Word where it automatically saves every couple of minutes. You have to tell Git when to create a commit, when to save your changes. Furthermore, you need to tell Git which files on your file system you want to include in a commit. And that's called adding a file to the staging index so that when you do a commit, the changes to those files gets included in the commit. So to demonstrate how the git staging index, the git add command, and the git commit works, I've stolen this presentation off a friend and I like it a lot. And it basically shows you, you know, if you wanna work with git, the first thing you need to do is get a git repository. You can just issue the git init command on your file system in a git bash shell in a terminal window. That'll initialize a Git repository in the folder in which that command is issued. And if you issue that command, you'll see a hidden folder named .git get created. Um, and that's basically initializing a Git repository. Now, a Git repository is designed to save your source code, maintain a history of commits, a history of changes. So. In that folder and subfolders of that folder where you created your Git repository, you'll add files. Here's a touch alpha.txt command, which is actually a way to create a file named alpha.txt at the command line, but you can just create a file any way you want, like just use a normal tool. That creates a file, but Git won't track that file. Git doesn't automatically add that to a commit. Git is not like autosave on Microsoft Word where every 30 seconds it, it does a save. You have to tell Git which files you want to include in the next commit, and then you actually explicitly have to issue a commit. So if you want Git to track that alpha.txt file, the first thing you need to do is issue this git add alpha.txt command. That says add this file named alpha.txt to the staging index. So you issue that command and all of a sudden git will do exactly what you tell it to do, which is add alpha.txt to its index of files, to its list of files that it's gonna include in the next commit. Now, after you've you're happy with all of the changes that you've made, you want to kind of make a stamp of that, kind of commit that to history. Um, well, in order to do that, you issue a commit. You say git commit dash m, dash m means I want a, a message to describe the commit. Here we'll just say first commit. That creates a commit. The alpha.txt file, the state of that file when the commit happens is now saved in the git repository deep inside that .git folder. The git index is then cleared. As you can see, there's nothing in the git index. And then you can start adding files again. And so maybe you wanna add another file called bravo. So touch bravo.txt. That adds bravo.txt to the file system, but git's not tracking it. So to track it, you would have to issue the git add bravo.txt command. That then adds bravo to the git index. And then the next time you do a commit and you say, hey, git commit dash m second commit, well, the changes that are made to that Bravo file are now part of that second commit. And the first commit has the changes that were made to alpha.txt, obviously. And the current state of your repository is the history of all of those changes aggregated together. And you can do this all day, right? You can then go and say, hey, I want to create another file and maybe create a file called Charlie. So touch charlie.txt. That sounds a little unchristian, but um, we create the file. Then we do the git add charlie.txt, that adds it to the index. Then we wanna do a commit, git commit dash m third commit. And I think you start to see where this is going. Now, by the way, you don't always have to specify the name of the file that you wanna do the commit to. You can actually do just a git add dot, and that means, hey, add all of the files that have changed to the git index. And you don't just add one file at a time. 
So in this example here, we've updated alpha.txt, so made changes to it. We've added a new file named devo.txt. We then say, hey, I want both of these added to the index. So we say git add dot, and that command now says, take all the files that have changed and add them to the index. So it's a lazy way of doing it, um, but it's also a good way of doing it. Um, and then that will add all of those files to the next commit where you say git commit dash m fourth commit. And there you go, you now have uh, a history of commits and that history of commits, the files that have become part of those commits is dictated by what you added to the git index with that git add command. Okay, so that's the theory. Let's do this in practice. Um, I've got a folder here called repos. Um, I'm gonna create a, a new folder in here and I'm gonna call it my project, why not? And in that project, well, I'll move into that project. Well, no, I won't move into that project. I'll open up the project, I'll right click and say open git bash here. That will open up the git bash shell. And then I'm just gonna repeat those commands. Maybe I'll move the file a little bit, but I'm gonna say git init. When I issue the git init command, you can see the dot git folder gets created. At this point in time, I want to add a new file. Now, in the example before, I said, you know, touch alpha.html, but I, mean, I can do that with this. I can just say alpha dot, well, I'll do dot html the first time, why not? And so at this point in time, I now have a file in my, my the, the same folder as the git repository, but Git's not tracking it. If I actually said, Git, hey, give me the status of your environment, it would actually say to me, you know what, there's a, a new file named alpha.html, but it'll show it in red, which means it's not going to be uh, tracked. It's not going to be included in the next commit. That's what it means there. It's an untracked file. So Control L clears that screen. Let me move this screen over a little bit. Uh, and so now I can do a git add command, git add dot, which means add all of the files that have changed to the git index. And now if I say git status, boom, it says there's a, a file that's going to be added to the next commit. Now I could say git commit dash m first commit. And boom, I now have a new commit. I now have a commit in my commit history where alpha.html in its current state, which is you know, there's really nothing in it, but um, is now committed to history. And if I actually just did a git ref log command, which says, give me a, a log, give me a history of all the commits that I'm currently tracking, you'd see that there's one commit in there, right? The first commit. And now, you know, you can add another file here, right? So I'm going to say, add another file, and I'll call this bravo.txt. If I do a git status command here, it'll say, hey, there's an untracked file, bravo.txt. I can say git add bravo.txt. And now bravo.txt is now part of the index. It's been staged to be included in the next commit. If I say git status, you can see, hey, there's one file to be committed. And again, git commit dash m, dash m stands for message. What message is gonna be associated with the commit? I can just say second commit. And boom, if I do that git ref log command once again, well, you can see I've got two commits, the first commit and well, the second commit. Okay, and again, when you do your git add command, you don't have to do just one file at a time. So, um, you know, I could come over here, the touch command, so I could go touch charlie.txt, again, not very Christian, but, um, you see that file created, and then I could go touch devo.html, are we not men? Devo is created, and I can even come in here and go into Bravo and actually edit the file and make a change, right? Because you're, you're doing source code management, you're not just creating files, you're gonna be adding files in. I'm gonna come over here, do control L to clear the screen, but I'll say git status. It's gonna to say to me, hey, there's one file that's modified, bravo.txt, charlie.txt and devo.html are untracked. Um, you might wanna do something about that. You know, you could even go in here and delete 
alpha.html and it'll probably bark about that too, right? It's now saying, hey, um, that alpha.html file was deleted. But everything's read here. It's not going to be included in the next commit unless I add it to the staging index. So I say git add dot, which means add everything here to the staging index. And now when I ask for the status, git, ref, git status, you can see it now says, hey, we're keeping track of all of these files, bravo.txt, devo.html. It looks like it's figured that uh, um, the one file was renamed alpha to charlie.txt, which is actually interesting because it's recognized that those files have no content in them. They're actually the same. So it's actually going to treat that update as a rename. I didn't expect it to do that, but that's pretty cool. Um, but now I do a git commit dash m, third commit. And boom, we now have three commits in our history. And so I'll clear that. I'll say git status, nothing to commit. And then maybe I'll do a git ref log just for good measure. And now you can see that, hey, there's actually three commits in our history. And there you go. That's the idea of the git add command and the way that it works with the git staging index and the way that files that are staged in that git staging index get added to commits that happen when you do that git commit. And that's a pretty good overview of, well, how you maintain a commit history with git. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, I just want to emphasize, you know, I've got some uh, full, complete Git tutorials, uh, full tutorials on Git and GitHub and Bitbucket and uh, GitLab. I love GitLab. I almost forgot about it. Um, so check the description and also take a look at the cards that are going to come up at the end of this video to check some of those out. Um, also, uh, I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. I'm not sure if I introduced myself. Uh, my name is Cameron McKenzie. Um, head over to theserverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Git, DevOps, Java, Jenkins, Scrum, Agile, you name it. Um, feel free to uh, sign up for my newsletter. Follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ.com. And, of course, follow on YouTube.